becomes the coefficient over here. What you need to have is if you just said, oh, it's the natural log of ax plus b, what doesn't work is if you were to actually find the derivative using the chain rule, you're going to say it's 1 over ax plus b times the derivative, which is a. You don't have times a over here in the integrand, so to adjust, you have to say times 1 over a. This is probably where the mistake happened. Yeah, oh, yes. yes. yeah. Right? What you needed was 1 half natural log 2x minus 3, and that's and I bet they were ready for you. Oh. Right? Is, is that popular wrong answer, 3 natural log 2x minus 3? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why. It's the half that you're missing. Okay. So, that's that. If you could just put your name on it, put it in the middle of the table, I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to grade it. If you get it all, everyone's going to get good grade. Okay. So, day two of advanced integration techniques, skill two in advanced integration techniques, and we have one more day. <laughs> Golly, shortest unit ever. I really meant for this to be like a six day unit. All right, I think you're going to like this one idea even more than partial fraction decomposition, definitely pushing the brain cells. The technique is called integration by parts. You may have heard about this, you know, out in the streets. Integration by parts is the... What? Where? Integration by parts. Oh, great, on the board. So good. All right. So integration by parts. For those of you that have heard about this out in the streets, maybe at Harvey Mudd or Penn or wherever the heck, you know, Tripod Boy is over here. Um, integration by parts is undoing a product rule. Let me show you what integration by parts the formula is. In your survival guide and in the textbook, it says that the integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. What? This is what integration by parts is. Uh -huh. The integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. Integration by parts is a double substitution. Double substitution. You pick one part and you say, oh, this is my u. You pick the other part and you say, oh, that's my dv. And you change the problem a little bit. I want to go through one, show you that it's true, and then come back and explain this a little bit more, OK? But at the very least, for those of you that are just good at memorizing important theorems, here it is. Integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. Now notice, you start off with an integral of a product. You end with the integral of a product. You still have to integrate. But what's going to happen if you choose the u and the dv in a smart way, the new integral is easier to work with. And that's the thing that's important for us. Kind of OK? All right, a couple of rules of thumb at the bottom where you see a thumb. General rule for the road is this. When picking the U term, pick the thing that when you take a derivative, it becomes easier to work with. But at the same time, you have to balance that whatever the DV is, the DV is the leftover stuff, you have to integrate that part. So let's just look at a problem and then we'll, we'll go from there and your smart the particles will start asking all the right questions as they always do. Okay, example one. Integral of x sine of x. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We've got a day of new material. I'm, I'm full. Okay, now what's the A, B student? What is the most popular wrong thing? The most popular wrong thing you could do here. Substitution. Wrong thing you could do. The most popular wrong thing. Oh. Most I popular wrong thing. I guess breaking it apart. Definitely of x plus sine of x. Right? They'd say like, oh, I know what the antiderivative of x is. It is one half. 
Antiderivative, one half x, one half x squared. Yeah, no one lets you get away with being wrong. The antiderivative of sine of x? Negative cos. Negative, negative cosine of x. The absolute worst thing to do would be like, let me integrate this and let me integrate this and just multiply the answers together. <laughs> that would work if this was addition or subtraction because that's where we get those properties. There is no product rule. So here's why I think integration by parts, which I'm just going to abbreviate as IBP. I see multiplication. I see multiplication and substitution isn't going to be the thing to get, get it there. So what I have to do is I pick a u and I pick the dv. What's the rule for picking u? The easier, the, the easier thing to derivative. find the derivative of. Oh. What's the thing that becomes easier when I find a derivative? X. X. dv then has to be all the other things. Sine of x? It's not just sine of x. Oh, the time dx. Sine of x and the dx. The way integration by parts works, you say, oh, so here's u. I now find du, and du is 1 dx. And then I find v. If dv is sine of x dx, what's v? V is the antiderivative of sine of x. What's the antiderivative of sine of x? Negative cosine. Negative cosine of x. Now, go back to the, the new v. Hold, hold on, Anthony. Integration by parts says this is u dv. The integration by parts formula says to do what, Brian? Uh, oh, the u times the v. The u times the v. So x times negative cosine of x, but not done. U v minus, minus indefinite integral. Of definite of integral. Of, uh, That's okay. V times v. v times du. Yeah. Right? Look at that. It still requires integration on your part, but the integration is much more within your reach. Right? Because if I clean this up, I'm going to say, oh, this is negative x cosine of x minus, I've got a negative over here, so let's make it a plus the integral of cosine of x dx. And everybody and their mama knows the antiderivative of cosine of x dx is sine of x. Y'all have some smart mamas. Okay, negative x cosine of x plus sine of x plus Charlie. I claim that that is the antiderivative. I want you all, while I go take attendance, to actually make sure I am not lying to you all as I sometimes do. Yeah. Um. Could we technically do it for Charlie with a negative cosine or Yes. Yes. You could have said negative cosine of x plus c, and I just said that. So, find me a derivative. You know what that guy? Oh, I think you win. Move it all through. With a point? No, but just put it in. Okay. With what two limits of integration? You don't need to. I have an apple over here if you need to hit him over there. Except it's Mr. Little. <laughs> you can still use it as long as it seems like it's being used for a good purpose. Exactly. What? <laughs> <laughs> it is made to be eaten. find the derivative, are you getting back to the original integrand? I hope so. Okay. So the reason that I'm asking you to do that is I just want there to be some faith that this integration by parts formula that I just slapped down on the board that maybe I just made up in the secret lab this morning actually does work. Okay. Derivative negative x cosine of x plus sine of x plus c. Over here, I'm going to do my product rule. Product rule, take the derivative of the first, leave the second alone, plus the first times the derivative of the second, plus the cosine of x, 
negative cosine of x, positive cosine of x cancel, x sine of x, bada bing. Exactly what I wanted. What questions are out there? There should be lots of questions here. Brian? How about for the d, we have 1 times dx. What is the derivative of this? Isn't the derivative of? You, well, x is 1. The derivative of x is 1, but the, normally the way you would write it is you'd say du dx. I'm taking the derivative of u with respect to x is 1, and I just kind of jumped ahead and said, oh, let's multiply both sides by du by dx to say du equals 1 dx. Great question. Other questions? Yeah? I'm going to prove yeah. the general expression was like u. We are, we are going to do that. Oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Ask me that question one more time. Why are some components that are similar that we need to know that we know that we are some conditions that we need to know so we can apply the those That we can do integration by parts? Yeah. What you're looking for is multiplication in the integrand that cannot be handled through single step substitution. We would try other things. Like, give up. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's try the second one. If you're feeling really good, go for it. For anybody who wants to be my partner for the sake of Nathan and Roger. They're quitters. No, they're not quitters. All right. All right, I see x squared natural log of x dx. I don't see an obvious choice for the u, right? Maybe you're like, oh, u is x squared. But if u is x squared, then the derivative is 2x. That's not going to work. So let's try integration by parts. If it's integration by parts, the question is, what do you pick for the u? And what do you pick for the dv? The dv could be that this way. I mean, not the derivative of If you look at the rule of thumb yeah. that we've got, though, what's the rule of thumb? Uh, so let's do the term we're looking for the part of the integral of the That becomes easier when you find the derivative. What part becomes easier when you take the derivative? x squared. OK, I'd, I'd start with x squared. And then dv? is the natural log of x dx. So du is going to be 2x dx. That's easy. But now you have to find the antiderivative of natural log of x. Yeah. Guess what? We don't know. We don't know it. Yes, I do. <laughs> so what I'm just going to say right now, bad choice. I mean, not for you. Not for me, but it's a bad choice. Because what wound up happening, although the u did get easier, the dv is something you can't actually integrate, so that's no good. So my advice? Switch. Switch it. <laughs> so u now is natural log of x. dv is x squared. Okay, if u is natural log of x, your next step, what's du, Victoria? What is du is 1 over x, be careful, dx. If dv is x squared dx, what's v? X. I need antiderivative. One third. One third. One third. X to the power of 3. X to the power of 3, and you can do plus c, but we're not going to do yes. c. Okay. Now, here's the good news. At least I was able to find the antiderivative of the thing that I needed. But now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it all together and say, okay, well, what's that antiderivative? According to integration by parts, u times, times v, v minus the integral of v du. du. Have a quick strategy conversation with somebody here. What are your, what's the plan here? Uh, so I started doing it in the first place, but can you explain what uh, the bench is? 
I think you can just do it. It's a bad choice because the only way you can proceed further is if you know what the antiderivative of natural log of x is. And you don't know it. Oh. It's not one that you know right off the top of your head, like antiderivative of sine of x, e to the x, cosine of x. You don't know that one. Isn't that one over it? That's the derivative. Oh. Okay. So what's the strategy here? A little bit of algebra, Brian. What do you see? Okay, one over three x cubed times one over x. I've got an x in the up here, and I've got an x down here. Simplify it. And if you really want to show off for all the friends at home, how about to factor out that one third? <laughs> x cubed times one over x is you x waiting? squared dx, and that's good. Not done. Why are we not done? Right, you still have to find the definite interval. So I've got natural log of x, one third x cubed minus one third the antiderivative of x squared, which should be one third x cubed. Let's see, if you clean this up, you're going to say it's one third x cubed natural log of x minus one ninth x cubed plus c. I should know that's be from. I think from 2 to 1. Yeah. Yes. Okay. First of all, I made a mistake. In integrating or yeah. the Not in integrating. The limits. I didn't actually pay attention to the limits. To, well, it doesn't really matter because it's 2 and 1. So you don't really need the absolute value on the limit. Okay. We have oh! <gasps> no! Oh, God! Wow. I mean, it doesn't really. <laughs> <laughs> we know. I mean, it wouldn't there was something there on word too. But the college board is coming in a couple of weeks. Wow. Oh. Man, at least. We're gonna have to yeah. pre-film this part, kids. Uh, you are right. Rewind, because press play. Because of the limits of integration, it does not matter. Which is why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is everybody okay with the integration piece? Yeah. yeah. Still wrong though. Victoria, what's wrong with this answer? Why is this not the answer? Look at the original problem. There's something in the original problem we never actually considered. The limits of integration. <laughs> okay. Tar, you're over here. <laughs> I've got to actually handle, I've got to plug in those limits of integration, right? So I haven't done that yet. So really your answer, you're going to say, I would do something like this. So the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared natural log of x dx is going to be what I get when I plug in 1 third x cubed natural log of x minus a ninth x cubed. Once I evaluate that from 1 to 2, but this part's way fast, right? Plug in the 2. 1 third times 2 cubed, I think that's 8 thirds natural log of 2 minus a ninth times 8 minus a third natural log of 1 minus a ninth. Natural log of 1 is going to be 0. It's Edgar! Mm -hmm. 1 third of 1, we get 0. So if I clean this up, I think 8 thirds natural log of 2 minus 7 over 9. And really dangerous for me to start simplifying things that don't need to be simplified. Unless it's free response. Unless it's free response. I mean, free response, don't simplify. Multiple choice, have to simplify. Brian, you okay? Wait, I got. I thought it was 8 over 9. It was. 8 thirds natural log of 2 minus 8 ninths. Minus, you still have to plug in the 1 over. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Big picture, we mostly okay. Okay, how many of you guys want to go back to the proof? Okay, two people want to go back to the proof. Roger as well. Three. Roger, of course, so you know, <laughs> we have forum. Okay. He's got the he's got the lawyer. Alright, yes, <laughs> yes. Because he will not accept anything on face value. Alright, let's do the proof. And I don't think you're going to necessarily love the proof. And for those of you that are like, but I didn't want the proof in my life. Mm -hmm. 
Roger. You're not going to be asked about the proof. I'm you not just going to use the result. Oh, thanks. Be worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> not on my watch. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, you never know. Okay. So here's. I want to start with the product. What the product rule says is this. If I have the product of two functions and I want to find the derivative, I'm using some different notation here, like the u times v prime. Mm -hmm. What does the product rule tell me to do? Find the derivative of one side and get the other one. Derivative. Not one side, though. I mean, one, one, one function. function. Derivative of the first. Then the times, times, the, times the second. Plus, plus u, u, u times yeah. the derivative of v. Okay. This has all the players. Because integration by part says the integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. We've got all the players here. But I'm going to rewrite. So let's rewrite as u v prime equals u v prime minus u prime v. What I did is I said, let's rewrite so that I have solved for this guy over here. First step was the product rule. Second step was just rewrite. What does integration by parts tell you to do? Antiderivative. Take an antiderivative. So if you guys are okay, this is true all the time, right? Yes. So rewriting algebraically, true all the time? Yes. So integrate. The integral of uv prime is the integral of uv prime minus the integral of u prime v. The only part that doesn't directly look like integration by parts is the middle part. But look what the middle part says. The middle part says start with uv and then UV, and then this the notation tells you to do something next. Find the derivative. Find the derivative, and then after you found the derivative, what do you do? Find the antiderivative. What's going to happen? Oh, okay. same thing. You get the same thing back because these guys are like inverse operations minus the integral of u prime v. So the integral of uv prime equals uv minus the integral of u prime v. <coughs> What the only thing that's different, I'm writing v prime, but an in integration by parts, dv minus instead of u prime du. I'm going to write the v first. It's multiplication. It's all okay. Ta-da! There's the proof. <laughs> I don't think anybody's life has changed. Yeah. Will it be complex if say the integral of u prime times v get combined with another integration by parts? Oh my god, there's all sorts of things that are about to happen in our young lives. What? But this is integration by parts. So integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. Down there it is. I mean, I was expecting to be shocked. You were expecting to be shocked? Yeah. Thank you for having a high bar for me. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what? Not quotient rule products. Only for products. Only for products. All right. I think I want to push your brains. We're going to have one. Is there one? Is there one? Um, not in calculus BC. So. Yeah. But does that exist? Exactly. Probably. Is there one for quotient? All right. So I'm ready to do the next one. So we just I mean. Yeah. I'm just going to let you guys dangle on this one for a couple minutes. Ooh, I already thought it went. I think there's a typo. No, there's no typo. Check the point. It's supposed to be a one. Oh. <laughs> Trust your instincts. Check the book. Should be over soon. I know, I don't. He says give up, but he keeps coming back. <laughs> That's Nathan Borrelio. Did it for three weeks.
follow the rule here. Let you be the thing that when you take the derivative it becomes easier, so a good choice for you is going to be x. So du is 1 dx. dv is e to the x dx. Can I integrate that? Yes, I know that the antiderivative of e to the x dx is e to the x. Good. Mm -hmm. Did everybody choose that for the u and the dv? Okay. Yeah. The reason why I would not choose e to the x as the u, it doesn't actually become any easier when I take its derivative, right? It's e to the x. It stays equally easy, char hard, whatever. <laughs> so, Nancy, what's, what's your setup? What, what happens next? Uh, x times e of x. x, e to the x, yeah. Minus. Minus. Definite integral. Definite uh, integral. e of x times d, dx. e to the x dx. I bet you know exactly what that is, right? Yeah. What is it? Oh. <laughs> x times e of x. x times e to the x. Minus e of x plus Charlie. Minus e to the x plus Charlie. Great. That is successfully the antiderivative. How many guys came up with that as your antiderivative? We're doing okay. Not the final answer. Brian, why not? You need uh, the end of integration. You actually have to do the integration here. Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Negative infinity to zero. If what I'm integrating is x e to the x dx, then it should be this guy here, x e to the x minus e to the x, evaluate from negative infinity to zero. Okay, I can do that. All right, I'm going to plug in zero. Zero e to the zero minus e to the zero minus negative infinity e to the negative infinity minus e to the negative infinity. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody hold me. Is that Isn't that a determined form? Negative infinity and negative infinity. Convince me. Because, you as, you, because as, you, as we prove back then, like a number of times infinity will give you infinity. But a number times infinity would be infinity. Mm -hmm. but, a number, but a number times zero would give you zero. And a number times zero is zero. Right? The, the key is e to the negative infinity approaches zero. So the question is, What's negative infinity times zero? I don't know. Can we just put zero? No. <laughs> Why would you go with zero though? Why are you thinking zero? Because any number times zero. Any number times zero is zero. That's a rule that you know. But there's another rule that we know. Any number times infinity. Any number times infinity, any number times infinity is infinity. Oh. <laughs> Which rule do we go with? I don't know. Well, this is the problem. This is why it's an indeterminate <laughs> form which is why the only option left to you is L'Hopital's rule. Oh. Yay, the hospital! Yay! Every time the college board spells it that way, I get upset. <laughs> oh, you missed an S. <laughs> but let's simplify all the parts that we can simplify. Zero times e to the zero. Zero. Okay. Zero minus e to the zero? One. 0 minus 1 minus something that we're going to get out of L'Hopital minus e to the negative infinity. 0 minus 0. Right, if I think about the graph of e to the x, e to the x increases this way, e to the negative infinity approaches 0. So the issue, the only thing standing in our way is to figure out what actually is the answer that we get from L'Hopital. So we have to use L'Hopital. No. Yep. Therapeutic, right? So, but here's what we're going to figure out. What actually is the limit that we're trying to evaluate? Negative infinity, e to the negative infinity. I need to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x, e to the x. This is not friendly. This is not your grandma's L'Hopital. Because <laughs> grandma's L'Hopital's rule works for quotients, fractions. Yeah. I don't have a fraction. I need to get to a fraction. Why? I can think of two ways. Because L'Hopital's rule is for fractions. It's for quotients. Then we do um, x uh, oh. over e to, the, uh, oh. e to the negative. Would that be legal? Yes. Absolutely. So legal, re another way? I'm going to do x to what? Wait, what do? Oh, no. Okay. 
So I, I, I think the easy way would be that way, x over e to the negative x. The other way, which yeah, I thought yeah, what right. you were doing, e to the x divided by 1 over x. Legal algebra, that's fine. But look, if I just take the limit as x approaches negative infinity right now in the numerator. Ooh. Ooh, what's that? Is that negative infinity? In the denominator? Zero. It'd be e to, e to infinity. It's e to the infinity, which is infinity. Guess what? Another derivative. In fact, our first derivative. We didn't do a derivative here, we just rewrote. Yeah. Okay. So L'Hopital's rule says take that limit as x approaches negative infinity, take a derivative here, 1, take a derivative here, negative e to the negative x, now take the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Numerator still 1, that makes me happy. I cannot possibly get an indeterminate form here. Let x approach negative infinity. So I've got negative e to the positive infinity. E to the infinity, what happens there? E to the infinity. It's infinity, right? But negative. One divided by negative infinity? Zero. So the part that was a mystery for us is equal to zero. Your final answer? Right, your interval from negative infinity to zero of x e to the x dx is equal to negative one. Bada boom, bada bing, there it is. Mm -hmm. So, how much work can we leave our answers for, I guess, mm -hmm. the top one like that before okay. we did the logic top? Say that one more time. So, for free response, since we know how to. Like, could you stop here? Yes. No, because this is an indeterminate form. This is not a number. So, oh, I, do we stop after we answer it? It's going to depend on the problem. If the problem just said, hey, friends, go find that, integration by parts, done, you don't have to evaluate. And because you're not evaluating, you never get to this icky stuff where I have to use L'Hopital's rule. But because you made it here and there is a L'Hopital's rule situation, you're going to have to do L'Hopital's rule as well. you got to be ready for it. I want you to be ready for anything, including example four. Good luck! Oh, yeah. Let's get that one. Mr. Yeah. D, <laughs> yeah. we're at 1 over uh, 0 be in the determinate form. One more time. 1 over 0 in the determinate form. 1 over 0 is not an indeterminate form. 1 over 0 would be... Oh, uh... Um, Denominator gets close to zero, numerator stays one. Times one? Oh, God. No? Now you're just making up stuff that sounds smart. Is it arc tangent of x or arc tan of x times x? Yeah, there's an arc tangent of x. There's only one x there. Okay, so you might want to check your glasses. It's a descent. <laughs> <laughs> Our tangent of x dx. This side over close. It is not sine over cos. Sine over cos is tangent. Thank you. Oh, cos over sine. Yes. No, that's, that's cotangent. It'd be tan of the negative one. Negative one. Negative negative one. one. It means tan to the negative one, but not in a reciprocal kind of way. Yeah. So, is it arc sine over or cos? No, it is not arc sine over. Are you going to give us a hint? Integration by parts. <laughs> so are we going to use DX? <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Use the survival, survival guide. It came to me. Right. Please use the survival guide. Integration by parts. There's a U and there's a DD. Wait, does it have to be with secant or tangent? No. There's a U, which is the thing that when you take the derivative, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. And there's the dv, which is the thing that you have to know how to integrate. There's really only one choice here. There's only one choice for what the u is. 1 over 1 plus x squared. u has to be arctan of x. Arctan of x. Don't leave the x hanging out there in the wind. And the dv? Dx. Dx. Stay with me. It gets sweet. 
So if u is equal to arctan of x, Chepe, what's the thing that we need to do next? You need to find the derivative. What's the derivative of arctan? Uh, I don't know, 1 over. 1 over. 1 over x squared. 1 over 1 plus x squared is what you said, right? Yeah. And then uh, dx over there? Now I need v. V equals x. V is equal to the antiderivative of dx, which is x. Good. Put it all together. So what, u times v? u times v. x arc tan x minus antiderivative v du. One over one plus x squared dx. God, that doesn't look better. I know the integration of one. But it is. It is better. It's a lot better. What? Oh, we just do substitution. Because now you can do substitution with the thing in the end. Um, Check it out. Right? What you have is you have x times arc tan. Oh, that's supposed to be x. Minus the antiderivative of x divided by 1 plus x squared dx. And depending on how your smarticle particles work, you either see it right away as substitution and you say, oh, well, I know what the u is. 1 plus x squared. It has to be 1 plus x squared. And I know what the derivative is. 2x. The derivative is 2x. And Chepe, why is that good? Oh, I see. Why is this really exciting for us? You can do substitution, and when you do the substitution over here, you're going to have u in the denominator. So it'd be uh, one half. Right. What you're going to have is we're going to say this is x times arc tan of x minus the antiderivative. Don't call this x dx. Call it a half of du. Don't say I'm dividing by one plus x squared. I'm really dividing by u. That constant of a half, I'm going to take out because then that's legal, it's a constant. And what you're going to leave me with is x times arc tan of x minus a half the integral of 1 over u du. And we know what the integral of 1 over u du is. Right, this is going to be natural log of. natural log of the absolute value of u, but if you guys are okay, I'm just going to go straight to natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x squared. And that same idea that we just did is how you would find the antiderivative of natural log of x and some of these other crazy ones. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to give you guys a minute or two. We'll try this next one. I know we are going fast. Okay. I need you to find the antiderivative of x cubed e to the 2x. Right. Once you get to the grown zone, I'll know. Mm -hmm. the, when you get to the grown zone, I'll know. Wait. Oh, special cases. <laughs> so there are special special special. Of course there are specials. You're not special. You're rare. Anthony, how's the video doing? Are we still filming? Yeah, bro. Okay, good. Does the camera make me look fat? <laughs> no, I put it. Uh, Why did you even look? <laughs> no, no, I just put some uh, Photoshop back. 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 Photoshop
Okay. Nine minutes. Let's see. Alright, so I hope everybody said U is going to be X cubed. And DV is E to the 2X DX, which means that DU is 3X squared DX and V is 1 half E to the 2X. Are all the friends okay with that selection of U and DV? Mm -hmm. U has to get easier when you take the derivative, but DV you have to be able to integrate it. So put it together. UV so I'm going to get a half of x cubed e to the 2x minus the antiderivative of v du. Well, what is that? 3 halves x squared e to the 2x dx. Guess what? More integration? You still have x squared times e to the 2x still have to integrate that. Now, is that better than where you were before? And if it's better, why is it better? Look at where you started. Look at where you are. Don't we is this better? Uh... Ryan, you seem to see that something's better here. Anthony, you look like you're not sure. Friends over here, is this better? I mean, look at where you started. Mm -hmm. Look at where you are. You started with x cubed e to the 2x. Oh, you yeah. now have 3 halves x squared e to the 2x. Yeah. Anthony, what do you see? What's better? We can take out the 3 halves and then we already know the antiderivative of e to of x. Well, you've got 3 halves the integral of x squared e to the 2x. And the reason why I would look at this and say this is better, why is it better? Better because what changed? Your x cubed. My x cubed decreased in degree by 1 mm -hmm. because x cubed became x squared. Yeah. Right? The degree went down by 1 in this first step with integration by parts. So the gut instincts are telling me, do it again. Because maybe the degree is going to go down again. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the degree is going to go down again. <laughs> so let's do it. I need U and I need GB. U is x squared, dv is e to the 2x dx. So that means that du is 2x and v is 1 half e to the 2x. So put them together, but I want to be careful. What I'm handling right now is the integration piece, right? We still have all this 1 half x cubed e to the 2x minus 3 halves of all the work we're going to do right now is to handle what's inside the brackets. And integration by part says u times v. All right. A half of x squared e to the 2x minus the integral v du. 1 half e to the 2x times 2x d to the x. If I want to clean it up a little bit, 1 half e to the 2x times 2x, the half and the 2 are going to cancel each other out. So if you're okay, I'm just going to clean this up in one sweep and say this is x e to the 2x dx. Do we do it again? I did. So guess what? Do it again. Do it again. Yes. So how will we be our final answer? So let me, let me clean this up because I don't want to lose all the fun stuff here. <laughs> x, 1 half x cubed e to the 2x minus 3 halves times this is minus 3 fourths x squared e to the 2x minus 3 halves times this becomes plus 3 halves integral of x e to the 2x dx. To integrate this part, which has gotten better, I started x cubed e to the 2x. I'm down to x squared e to the 2x. I'm at x e to the 2x. Guess what, y'all? We are almost there. We are, if you're paying attention and you're hopeful, one more time. One more time. U is equal to x. DB is e to the 2x dx. Inception. DU it is inception, right? We, we are going deep into the dream sequence. Woo! 1 half x cubed e to the 2x minus 3 fourths x squared e to the 2x plus 3 halves of, woo! 
uv 1 half x e to the 2 x minus the okay. antiderivative of v du 1 half e to the 2 x dx. That looks horrible, but here's the good news. Here's the good news. We actually do know how to integrate 1 half e to the 2 x. The half is a constant, pull it outside. Antiderivative e to the 2 x. So it's a half of 1 half e to the 2 x. So this is really 1 fourth. So, whoo! 1 half x cubed e to the 2x minus 3 fourths x squared e to the 2x. 3 halves times this is 3 fourths x e to the 2x. This we just said is really a fourth. So minus 3 eighths e to the 2x plus c. This will teach you Roger to miss four days in a row. <laughs> and that's the end of the problem. Would it be that complicated? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Is it just, just that point? Or like how many points would that be? I don't know. Well, a billion. <laughs> so let me show you guys a different idea. Oh, uh, what should be oh, simple? It's even worse. Did you kill me? <laughs> Here's the other idea. So this is going for Roger. Where does it go? where the problem shows up again for the second time and it says a nifty trick, this is where it goes. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the, do the same integral, get the same answer through a different process. You will tell me. We're going to, We're going to make one column for x cubed and one column for e to the 2x. What we're going to do with the x cubed is called repeated derivatives. Stay with me, you'll, you'll figure it out. But every time I take a derivative of x cubed, I'm going to integrate e to the 2x. So repeated integrals. So in the first column, take a derivative. Derivative of x cubed? Oh my god, I forgot. Oh, 3x. 3x squared. Three. Over here, go find the antiderivative. One half, one half, one half, one half e to the 2x. Take another derivative. 6x. Take another integral. 1 fourth e to the 2x. Take another derivative. 6. 6. Take another integral. 1 eighth e. 1 eighth e to the 2x. Take another derivative. 0. 0. This tells me I'm going to stop. Take another integral. 1 16 e to the 2x. Check out your answer. See what we got going on over here. Yeah. Oh, we start with x cubed and x squared. Oh. Stay with me for just one second. You see it? <laughs> oh, you see it? <laughs> x cubed times one half e to the two x is a half x cubed e to the two x, right? Next diagonal. Three fourths x squared e to the two x. There should be something you don't like though. There's a negative. There's a negative over there. This guy here, 6x times 1 over 8, that's really 6x over 8, that's really 3 fourths. x e to the 2x. This guy here, 6 over 16, is really 3 eighths e to the 2x. What you have to do to make this work is when you multiply on these diagonals, you take the positive product, but then here it's the opposite sign. Keep the sign, change the sign. You take repeated derivatives, you do repeated integrals, and you're multiplying on the diagonal. This times this, positive. This times this, opposite sign. This times this, keep the sign. This times this, opposite sign. Yeah. So this only works with the e to the x and? It's going to work with things that have this repetitive cycle. 